to dive into another one of your core automations that will be among your top three revenue generating flows in your Klaviyo account. Enter the almighty abandoned checkout flow. Chances are that you've seen it before, but why do you need it? How does it work? And how to set it up using our no tech framework in just a few minutes. All that and more coming up in this video. And make sure to stick around till the end of this video for an exclusive look at our internal agency document that is filled with the best converting emails you can swipe, catchy subject lines and preview texts, and so much more. Designed to get you up and running with your Bennett card emails in no time. But first, hit that like button and subscribe for more Klaviyo insights and tutorials. For those of you who are new to this channel and the series, hi, I'm Nate and I run Savio Agency. And this video you're watching is part of our free masterclass where I'll be sharing the simple tactics that made our clients millions in email and SMS marketing revenue. Ready to dive in deeper? All the video lessons are just a click away. You'll find a link in the description box or you can hit this card right here. As always, let's first take a look at where the abandoned checkout fits into your customer journey. As you can see, it's positioned right before that dollar sign, which is the finish line of your sales funnel and the ultimate goal of making a purchase. The abandoned checkout flow is part of your core flows and is designed to target customers with the highest intent to buy. These are users who went beyond window shopping or casually adding items to their cart. All we need now is the right automation to gently nudge them towards completing their purchase, just in case they forgot or got distracted. But there's another reason to set it up. It can seamlessly collect the email addresses of your users, allowing you to build your email list within Klaviyo. As a matter of fact, we have a separate list called checkout signups just for those users. I covered that in more detail in our Klaviyo account setup video, link to watch it in the description down below. But just in a nutshell, thanks to the way this flow is configured, when users enter their information and email address on the checkout page, your abandoned checkout flow fires off and waits to see if those users complete their purchase. If not, they will qualify to receive the abandoned checkout flow, making this flow one of the only ones pretty much that automatically triggers without users needing to sign up through a pop-up first. And in terms of setup, the abandoned checkout flow doesn't require any fancy setup inside of Shopify. So if your Shopify store is already integrated with Klaviyo, the abandoned checkout flow is already available to use. Next, we'll share with you our simple setup you can do all by yourself in just a few minutes to get this flow up and running in no time. Let's dive in. As I said earlier, the abandoned checkout flow is a pretty easy one to set up, but pay close attention as there are some important components like the dynamic block section, for example, that you'd like to make sure that you set up correctly. Otherwise, your abandoned checkout email might look like this. Let me show you how we do it in Savio. In your Klaviyo account, go to the Flows tab, click on Create Flow to your top right, then in the search bar section, enter Cart. Quick note, you might see many flows that are called abandoned cart reminder, but this one here is the abandoned checkout flow we'll set up in this video, and this one is the abandoned cart flow. These two are very similar, but their metrics are different. Looking closely in Klaviyo, this one says added to cart trigger and not checkout started trigger. Let's dive in here for a sec. The abandoned checkout means your customer went beyond just adding products to their cart. They proceeded to complete their checkout, filled in their shipping info and contact info, but dropped off at the final payment step. And inside of Klaviyo, it should look like this. For the abandoned checkout flow, you'd like to make sure you have the checkout starter metric, while for the abandoned cart flow, you'd like to have the added to cart metric. Great, now that we got it covered, let's keep going. Click on abandoned cart reminder, standard, email and SMS, which we need for our flow. Feel free to apply the simple naming guidelines we use here at Savio to keep your account nice and organized. If you want to learn how to keep your Klaviyo account organized for months and years to come using our simple naming guideline method, I will leave you a link to watch it down below. Now click on create flow. By default, your trigger should be already checkout started. Now for your flow filters, make sure you have these two active. Place order zero times since starting this flow and has not been in this flow in the last seven days. Let's go over these two real quick. First flow filter is there to verify whether a user has made a purchase or not before sending any additional emails in the sequence. Second flow filter is there to check if a user has been in this flow already in the past seven days. You can test this time frame for 7, 14, 30 days or more. Just a quick note before we move on. We often come across stores setting up these additional flow filters as shown in this example. 
and we get why they do it. They want to make sure anyone who has made a purchase doesn't get bombarded with unnecessary emails. However, with the flow filters we just discussed, especially the first one, you can skip this step altogether. When you've got this flow filter in place, Clavio automatically check if a customer has made a purchase each time before sending the next email. This means you don't need any additional conditional splits in your flow. Let's move on. From here, all you need is just to save these crucial components. First, the dynamic block. This will show the product they left at checkout. Second, the CTA, which is a call to action. Once clicked, it will provide a direct link to take them back to their checkout. Click those three dots in the first abandoned checkout email. Hit edit email. Even though it might not look great, this email has all the technical components we need for our future abandoned checkout emails. Test it by clicking preview and test up top. Check out how the dynamic block smoothly grabs all the stuff they left behind. Save it by clicking on the star button, which will make it a universal block that will work for your future abandoned checkout emails. Now let's sort the CTA with the link to get them back to checkout. Double check you've got the right syntax. They'll make sure the link takes them right back to their checkout page in your Shopify store. Great, that's the one. Great, now do the same thing we did for the dynamic block. Name it, save it, and we're finished. Moving forward, in order to add emails with dynamic blocks to this flow, just navigate to Universal Blocks to find them. Just keep in mind the name you use to save it so you can easily find it in the future. Now, let's give this email a quick look to make sure everything is okay. And it's working. On to the content. Now for the actual emails within the abandoned checkout flow. Let's jump over to look at some email examples inside of our agency doc alongside with subject lines, preview text you can swipe to create your abandoned checkout emails in just a few minutes. All right, guys, as promised, here it is, our very own internal agency document, which we use to craft not only beautiful, but highly converting abandoned checkout emails. And would like to share this with you. If you'd like to grab a copy, link to download this whole document will be waiting for you in the description of this video. Now, what's included in this doc? You have potential subject line and preview text for each one of the emails, as well as content buckets you want to focus on potentially to craft your emails, as well as other insights, A-B testing formula, which we use to ensure all of our emails are optimized for maximum profits. And of course, if you're planning to share this document with a colleague or a team member, maybe a designer, uh, you can basically share this document and they'll see a quick overview, what it is, how does it work, who'll receive it, so on and so forth. Now, of course, what we gathered here today for is to check out some examples, which hopefully point you in the right direction to craft your emails in no time. This is email number one. You see these emails are all different, but they have one thing in common. Can you guess what it is? I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see it better. All right, guys, if you guessed this dynamic block section, you guess correctly. This is what you want to make sure you have higher up above the fold section. The fold is what we call the section underneath what you see when you open the email on your phone, on your desktop browser. Typically the email, first you see one section, then you have to scroll down. So here in that above the fold section, you want to include your dynamic block section, which we spoke about more inside of our video as well. And this will help you to create an emotional connection with your shopper to click and go back to the checkout and finish it. Okay. Some of the things you want to include inside of the first email is maybe a rewards program maybe other things that make your brand unique, maybe some press mentions or what makes the product so special, uh, your secret sauce, if you will. Sometimes it could just be a brand statement, some help as you see fit. For email number two, we wanted to keep a very similar design and also include a dynamic block, but we also want to throw in an incentive. In this case, it's a 10% off. And as you can see here, the email starts with the 10% off first and then in most cases, we include the dynamic block underneath. Here's an example where it's the other way around, but we did have a mention right here at the very top. So if you open the email on your desktop browser, you typically see this much, right? So then you have to scroll down and you'll see the products you left at the checkout and of course the offer and a call to action to redeem it. Okay. So whether the email is longer, doesn't really matter. 
it always features these two things. For email number three, this is a final reminder. And as you can see here, your 10% off is about to expire. Time is running out. We also included a countdown timer, which you can see here, but it counts down 24 hours or five hours, depends on what we set up for uh, the store. If you would like to see how to set up these countdown timer, I have a video on how to set it up. Link in the description down below. In some examples, we also offer a greater discount. As you can see here, 15% off, and we offer this only for first time buyers. So it's just a last kind of ditch effort to convert first time uh, abandoners. And with this final example, very similar to the first email I showed you, countdown timer, 10% off about to expire. And everything is very, very similar to the rest of the emails. There you have it. One of the most vital pre-purchase email flows in the bag. Expect to see it in your top three performance soon. Want to keep leveling up your email marketing strategy? Well, luckily we're not done yet. There are more core flows you can go ahead and set up next. So make sure you watch it as soon as you can. If you found this video helpful, it's part of our free email and SMS marketing masterclass. It's 100% free. I'll put a link down in the description box. Go ahead and check it out right now. Please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more Klaviyo tips and tutorials. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.